Okay, today on Plant-Based Kidney Health, we are talking about how to lower protein in the urine. So Dr. Hashmi, medication-wise, supplement-wise, how can those help someone lower the amount of protein in their urine kidney disease? Yeah, this is a, a great topic. So, you know, always lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. We always want to start with that. That means making sure that your weight is good, making sure that you're exercising, making sure that you're eating a healthy plant predominant diet. Those are the basics and emphasizing sleep and stress. Now that you have all of those, you want to make sure that you're talking to your doctor. And the first line of defense is classes of drugs called ACE inhibitors or ARBs. We've talked about these drugs many times. These are the prills or the artens. So the prills are like lisinopril, enalapril. Artens are like losartan, uh, telmisartan, so forth. So ACE inhibitors or not both together, but ACE inhibitors or ARBs are the first line of defense. And if you watch our other video on protein in the urine, you'll see that what we're trying to do is reduce the protein in the urine by 50% and best case scenario, get it to less than a thousand milligrams per day. So that's the goal is, is to bring that protein in the urine down. So if ACE and um, ARBs are doing the trick, great. Now in some people, they might have contraindications to ACEs and ARBs. In that case, we can use certain specific types of calcium channel blockers. Now, they're not as good as ACE inhibitors or ARBs, but these calcium channel blockers, they're much older. They're names like deltiazem, verapamil. We hardly ever use them, but you should just be aware in case your doctor does put you on them. There is good data behind them, and they're oftentimes used because we couldn't use the ACEs or ARBs or because you needed to add on another medication to get optimal blood pressure, despite putting people on ACEs and ARBs. Now, let's say you've done that first step. So we got you on lisinopril, or instead we put you on losartan, fine, either one. And your proteinuria is still quite not there. The next step is to think about a sodium glucose transporter, so SGLT2 inhibitors. SGLT2 inhibitors, those are names like empagliflozin, the flozin, so empagliflozin, dapagliflozin, brand name is like Jardians, for example. Those are really helpful drugs because they have a number of key things they do. First, they help with making you pee out sugar, so they have a anti-glycemic effect. They will lower your blood sugars. Number two, they're kidney protective. They will lower your blood pressure. They will lower the protein in the urine. Number three, they are cardiac protective. So all three of those things become very important. And SGLT2 inhibitors are now standard of care. So if you have kidney disease, even if you don't have protein in the urine, we still use SGLT2 inhibitors. And now you will see that back in the day, if your kidney function was less than 30 GFR, we would tell you, yeah, you know, it's a little bit late. We're not going to do SGLT2s. Those days are gone. We use them for up to GFRs of 20 or higher. So things are changing. We're getting more data and we use them. And if you're already on ACEs, you're already on SGLT2s, and we still don't have control, we have a newer agent. It's called Carendia or Finrenone. Finrenone is interesting because it's the very first non-steroidal mineralocorticoid receptor blocker. Why do you care? Because if the mineralocorticoid receptor are overactivated, what ends up happening is, is that the downstream effects are that you start to get inflammation and you start to get fibrosis both in the kidneys and in the heart. This is why you'll see that your heart doctor may prescribe you finrenone or your kidney doctor may prescribe you Finrenol. And now, of course, everybody's favorite is supplements. Supplements are always tricky because we just don't know enough about them. There is some data that says if you look at things like turmeric, for example, curcumin, if you look at turmeric, there is data to say that it can be helpful. The one thing that I'll tell you is, is you always want to be mindful of supplements because of the fact that depending on the conveyor belt, depending on the standards, depending on the company, did they do enough of a testing to make sure they're not contaminated with heavy metals? So while you're doing turmeric, are you also getting a nice dose of heavy metals, lead, cadmium, mercury, whatever, with it? And those are things you don't want.
So it's very important, one, to be careful of that. And number two is, is when it comes to interaction, sometimes the turmeric supplement might not be turmeric. It might be some other stuff that's in there, but nobody tested it. So just be mindful. Always get a reputable company. And the best case is, is if they had third-party testing. So if they had third-party testing, such as USP, NSF, so forth, at least that's some reassurance. Another thing is, is folic acid in diabetics, but not in people who don't have diabetes. Specifically in diabetics, folic acid has been shown to lower protein in the urine. And of course, when it comes to everybody who has protein in the urine, the active form of, di I'm sorry, active form of vitamin D, not over-the-counter vitamin D. Over-the-counter vitamin D does not help. But the active form, which is, goes by calcitriol, that's been shown to lower protein in the urine. Those are just a few basic things that on the supplement side have been shown. But if you have protein in the urine, please talk to your nephrologist. Do not delay getting treatment because the longer you wait, the more that protein is going to be toxic to the kidneys and it's going to damage the kidneys. And once that GFR is gone, it's not coming back. I know there's some, certain people on the internet, they talk about how they completely reverse their kidney function and so forth. And it's very, very misleading because if I cut your finger, your finger can heal. If I cut off your finger, I don't care how much of turmeric you take. The finger is not coming back. And this is such a common thing. And, you know, I know when people are in a difficult place and they're looking for hope, hope is a beautiful thing. But just be careful of people who are over-promising, but they really can't deliver. All right. So then, Michelle, on that same note, switching the topic a little bit, you know, what can people either eat or avoid eating when it comes to controlling the protein in the urine? Yeah. So as far as food, it really, I mean, it really does go hand in hand with what you mentioned about medications and supplements is that inflammation is a big part of what we want to target with the food that we're eating. And so you mentioned, you know, plant rich or plant predominant diets. Um, those are rich in anti-inflammatory nutrients. They're rich in fiber and phytochemicals and all of those, um, including, you know, unprocessed plant proteins have been found to help reduce protein in the urine. Um, and on top of that, you know, of course, low sodium diet is part of it, but, you know, we're talking swapping animal protein or some of your animal protein for things like beans, lentils, minimally processed soy, like edamame, tofu, tempeh, nuts, and seeds. Um, you know, we overall, we want diets low in ultra processed food. Um, ultra processed food is higher in sugar and salt and fat. And, um, that could be found in animal products or in vegan or, you know, plant-based products. And so we want those ultra processed food to be lower. So there's less inflammation, less, you know, gut damage and then which leads to more inflammation and then, um, you know, lower also making those minimally processed plant protein swapping for the animal proteins and then making sure the diet is rich and especially fruits and vegetables, but those whole plant foods. So I guess summarizing that limit or avoid, you know, the fast food, the soda, the sugary beverages, the junk food, whether it's vegan, plant-based or animal-based, and then eat more fruits, vegetables, and other plant foods like nuts, seeds, legumes, um, and then make sure that you're sticking with a, a low sodium diet as well. Anything you want to add to that, Dr. Hashmi? That's perfect. All right, there you go. It's some tips for how to lower protein in the urine. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.